Hi, my name is Alan Halls. I'm going to show you a few tips and tricks about working with silicone rubber and maybe some plastics that hopefully you'll find to be useful. For myself, I'm using a 35 Shore rubber. It's a tin cure silicone rubber. You can see it's a little thick. Part of that is because it's about 60 degrees out here. Uh, but mostly it's just because it's a 35 Shore uh, rubber. I got mine from uh, South Valley Specialties in Salt Lake. They seem to have the widest variety of high quality silicones uh, from most of the places I've worked with and I've really enjoyed it. I've purchased silicone at maybe four other locations and I've liked it. It's a QSI brand. I'm sure you can buy it lots of different places but uh, if you live in the Salt Lake area or you don't mind doing some mail order you can get that. One of the things about working with silicone is air bubbles. Um, you're using a, a high quality silicone to get high definition, high pre precision, and part of that is just going to be destroyed if you have air bubbles. So I'm going to show you a few things that you can do that will minimize that. And uh, I'm not going to put any of the catalyst in because we don't need it for the example. Um, and so let me just uh, give you a quick demonstration. Now, I've been working with silicone for three or four years, five or six years now. Uh, and one of the things that happens is as you uh, add some of the catalyst and you have to stir it, you know, you're going to stir it for a while. Um, a really good idea, if you've been working with it, is to always have two or even three cups sitting there with you, especially if, uh, depending on how full your cup is, um, you just can't have a very full cup and mix it well. The bottom quarter inch or so, it's as hard as you try, it's never gonna get a really good even uh, mixture of the catalyst. Um, and I'm gonna try bringing this in so you can see, um, tip it a little bit. Okay, so there's some air bubbles in there, and you can kind of see that, and it's just from mixing it. Um, but it's because this stuff is so thick that it doesn't just rise to the surface like water and escape. So there's several different methods. Uh, I'm using a vacuum chamber now, and but I never had a vacuum chamber before. I'm going to show you a quick trick before I show you the vacuum chamber. Okay, so as I pour this, get it started, okay, slow it down, and I'll see if I can let you actually see. So as this goes into a really thin stream, as it crosses over the lip of the, um, the cup, you're going to notice that a lot of these air bubbles will pop. And it, and it gets to a pretty thin stream. And this, is, this feels really tedious while you're doing it because it's going to take you a long time to pour up a, a sizable silicone mold. But it's going to save you a ton of time. I mean, your tin cure silicones, uh, if you use the right amount of catalyst, the catalyst amount that is advertised, which is 10% by weight, it's going to take you anywhere from 8 to 12 hours, depending on the temperature of the room. And, you know, you're going to have a serious time commitment. And so you might as well just take an extra five minutes and pour it slow. I've heard of people that just punch a little hole in the bottom of their cup with a nail or something and let it drain. Uh, personally, I've never done that. Uh, I just, I don't mind taking the extra time. Uh, for myself, the reason why my silicone molds have to be bubble free is I'm pouring up these teeth molds and it's got holes that go all the way through it. And quite frequently, uh, I used to get air bubbles halfway through that. And what that ends up looking like is when you've got your, your mold here. So I went ahead and clipped a few of them off. But if I can show you this one here, it, you can see that that used to have an air bubble there. Halfway through, uh, it just had an air bubble. And so that's kind of a shame. 
but you can with careful planning you can get away from that for the most part sometimes it's going to happen i mean i've been pouring that same exact mold for going on three years and i poured that one last week so it happens but you recover uh, hopefully and uh, for me that one wasn't that big of a deal because it was the one just before my master mold and so i just had to re-drill out the typodonts when i got done uh, the typodonts when they get finished uh, you add some different uh, additives color additives to the plastics sand them down and make some teeth out of them chomp 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 so let me show you the advantages of a vacuum chamber and vacuum chambers come in all different sizes and shapes and uh, this is one I actually made myself. I welded it together um, a few weeks ago because the other one that I had was just really too big. And the problem with it being too big was that it took a long time to vacuum out all the air, which actually is interesting because now I have a different kind of problem, which is because this one vacuums out so quickly, then... Uh, the bubbles don't have as much time to rise. So forgive me for the sound of the vacuum pump. Hopefully it's not too bad. So I just poured a little bit of, uh, I put tape on either side of my, uh, my metal. This is an aluminum tray that I welded together. So I put tape on either side and then poured some silicone in the middle, let it self-leveling. So I really didn't have to do anything else, but it was highly beneficial compared to my last one, which you had to use a silicone cop. So I like this one a lot better. So let's see. You should start seeing it rise. So this is a Sergeant Welsh pump, a uh, duo seal vacuum pump. Uh, I've used all kinds of different vacuum pumps and they all work pretty well. This one's one of the quieter ones. So, okay, so what you just saw, and sorry I didn't prep you for it before, but, uh, okay, so it reached the point where it had vacuumed out the most of the air and it, all those bubbles rose up to the top, and then as they popped, they influenced each other, and they just collapsed on themselves. So I'm gonna scoot back here. So that wasn't really a big problem uh, in this instance, because as you saw, let me pull this out. I've got, what, maybe four ounces in the bottom of this 16 ounce cup. It expanded four times its size. It's very common for uh, when I'm mixing up enough to make up one of these molds here, uh, that I'll use two of these and I will have them each half full. And uh, with this smaller vacuum chamber, I tend to have to wait just a little bit uh, to, for the air bubbles to rise up before I can, um, I have to stop vacuuming, wait for the air bubbles to rise, then some of them will pop and then I can vacuum out the rest. Give me just one second, I'm gonna wipe off my hands. Okay, I'm back. So now that I've vacuumed out the majority of those bubbles, uh, they're not 100% gone, you know, I can see, still see a few in the top of this. So we're going to use the exact same technique that I showed you earlier. Going to pour slowly and, uh, and let those bubbles pop on the way down. One of the other things that you can do is when you're pouring into your mold, if you pour off to one side, your rubber will tend to flow away and your air bubbles will stay still. Now, depending on what type of a mold you're doing, if it's a statue, that's not a big deal. Uh, but if you're doing an intricate part like mine, where the rubber has to go and flow in, uh, then you're gonna have, 
you're going to have to play with it to figure out how fast you can add it and uh, you may have to thin your rubber down. Again, this is a thick one. It's a 35 shore. Uh, I've gone all the way down to like a five, uh, depending on which one, what project I'm doing. You can add a silicone oil. Um, I got mine from Aero, Aeromarine. Um, Dot com. They're out of California and you can buy a gallon of oil that you can pour into this and it'll thin it down. The downside of that is it's going to make your silicone a little more tear. Uh, it's going to more likely to tear. Um, but, you know, it, it depends on what you need your mold to do. Um, speaking of which, I've got some... The Aeromarine rapid set accelerator um, if you screw this up <laughs> I've actually had my silicone cure on me while stirring it uh, all of a sudden it's cured I, you, you can't pour it you can't do anything with it it's time to throw it away and, and get more uh, this stuff the good stuff runs me about $130 a gallon the stuff from Aeromarine, uh, I've purchased it in five gallon, two five gallon buckets, and uh, I can't remember, but I think it was just a little under $500 when I bought uh, the two five gallon buckets. And so you can get pretty good deals if you buy in bulk, but of course that goes without saying for just about anything. So uh, the second, the last thing I'm going to tell you about is after I've done all of my other things with vacuuming out your air bubbles, you've poured it slowly, you've poured it, uh, you've got everything as perfect as you can do, that's great. Um, and in, the, in a lot of ways that might be all you can do depending on what your budget is and how serious you are about making molds. For myself, I have really enjoyed using a Harbor Freight uh, pressure pot, and let me spin around, let me grab it. Oh, okay, so this is my Harbor Freight paint pressure pot. Um, I'd show you the inside, but unfortunately it's under pressure. Uh, cool thing I did, it's got a one-way uh, valve in there, it's called a check valve. You can buy them on eBay for about $5. So I can plug my uh, air line into this, charge up the tank up to 80 PSI, and then it just sits there. I can disconnect my hose and use it for charging up another container if I have multiple containers going. Uh, and then to, to release pressure, I just have this little eighth inch valve. But, uh, so what the difference is, is you saw that as I pulled the vacuum, each little tiny air bubble became bigger and bigger and bigger. Now, after we've done that, I'm going to put it back in the pressure pot under 80 PSI, whatever bubbles are left are going to become so incredibly small that uh, they aren't going to affect you for the most part. Now, uh, you know, depending on what you're taking a mold of, this could cause a problem because let's take wood, for instance, which you'd never want to take a, a silicone mold of wood unless it was a dense hardwood, but, uh, and you, speaking of which, releasing agent. This is a petroleum-based releasing agent, which works significantly better than all the silicone-based sil uh, releasing agents. The reason why is, um, I'm going to show you something. I have one copy, two copies. Three copies. I got five copies of the exact same thing. The reason why is about two years ago I made one master copy and I was making all of my silicone molds off of one copy. The problem with that is every time you take a silicone impression of these, every time I pour up a mold, a small bit is going to penetrate into the surface of this and it's going to stick. When I pull off my silicone mold, a very small amount of that is going to stay on my master copy. The problem with that is rubber sticks to itself. As I mentioned in a previous, this particular mold was poured in three pours. 
I had a first pour that was an eighth inch thick. I had the second pour, which was about an inch and a half thick. And my final pour, let me see if I can pop this out. So the final pour was what allowed me to get the flange because I was just, I was uh, spitballing it, putting it all together out of the individual pieces and then I wanted to pour it up into one piece. And that required me to pour it up into three pours. That way it had a bottom pour, uh, part here because uh, otherwise if I had just done it in two pours then this would sit all the way down to the bottom of my jar and it wouldn't have a positive stop. So uh, rubber sticks to itself really well when you pour it. And the same thing is going to hold true for your copy. As you make multiple copies of your original product, whatever it is, this is a polyester resin called uh, fast cast or quick cast. It's an 80 uh, shore material. Uh, it's pretty impact resistant. It's hard. It, it, works really well for what I'm using it for. Um, however, it, there's a certain amount of por porosity and the silicone will penetrate and it will adhere around the fourth or fifth time I take an impression of that, it will become permanently bonded together. And that creates a significant problem when all of a sudden you need to, to make a new copy. So for that, uh, again, originally, uh, years ago, I was using the silicone-based. Uh, I haven't had any problems since switching to the petroleum-based, but I haven't entered mass production again yet. So for what it's worth, uh, I, I'm going to stick with this one for now. Uh, again, I got it at the South Valley Specialties in Salt Lake. And uh, I don't know where else you'd get it. I, I live right down the street from them. so. It's easy for me to go pick it up, but I'm sure you can find some online. If not, let me show you the Price Driscoll is the manufacturer, and it's called Eject It. Uh, and it says, we'll release almost everything from anything. And so far, I've found that to be true. So, um, I don't know what else to tell you today. Um, Except, you know, you can use the exact same methods that I've talked to you about earlier to pour up your fast cast and polyurethane resins. And uh, you, if you're going to make multiple copies like I am, so I, for the most part, you don't need to put your, you don't need to vacuum and you don't need to pressurize your polyurethane. However, if you are creating your master casts, then you are definitely going to want to do something to make sure that these last as long as possible. For me, that was vacuum and pressure. And uh, I expect to get lots of life out of those molds. Till next time, uh, give me, just let me know if you have any questions and I'll do my best to answer them in comments or videos. Thank you.